Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 16th of May. Amit Shah slams opposition leaders' remarks on POJ. Calls for region's unification rattles Pakistan. India grants citizenship to first batch of refugees under new citizenship law. Sri Lanka says almost 16 citizens fighting as mercenaries killed in Russia-Ukraine war. And now for all the details. Days after Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir, witnessed violent protests. India's interior minister, Amit Shah, slammed opposition leaders' remark over POJK and said that New Delhi has all the rights over the region. Earlier, JKNC chief Farooq Abdullah, in a recent controversial remark, while responding to whether POJK will be merged with India, said that Pakistan is not wearing bangles and also possesses an atom bomb. Similarly, Congress leader Mani Shankar Ayer sparked a row after a clip of his old interview went viral, in which he said Pakistan is a respected nation and you can talk tough with them, but India should start the dialogue. Slamming their remarks, Shah said Parliament has passed a proposal with majority votes that POJK is a part of India. He further said every inch of the land of the region belongs to India and it shall remain so. Jo Farooq Abdullah ji aur Congress ke neta keh rahe hain ki Pakistan ke paas atom bomb hai to unko sanman kariye Pak occupy Kashmir ka demand na kariye. Main unko puchna chahta hu ki 130 crore ki abadi wala jansankhya wala atomic power Bharat ye mahan desh kya kisi se dar kar apne adhikar jaate jaane dega? Kis prakar ki soch hai? Reacting to the remarks, Pakistan said that Indian politicians should refrain from involving Islamabad in their electoral discourse and also accuse them of exploiting anti-Pakistan sentiment to stir nationalistic fervor. Talking about POJK, Foreign Office said, no amount of inflated Indian statements can change this reality that the region belongs to Pakistan. However, India has always remained resolute on its resolve that the occupied territory is an integral part of the country. India on Wednesday granted citizenship to a batch of 14 people under the new Citizenship Amendment Act months after it was notified by the government. While certificates were physically handed over to 14 applicants seeking citizenship, Digital signed certificates were also issued to many other applicants through email. Harish Kumar, a Hindu refugee from Pakistan who has lived in Delhi for over a decade, said after getting his citizenship on Wednesday, this is like being reborn. If a person doesn't have the rights, then what is the point? We can go forward in education jobs, he added. Sir, dream come true wali feeling hai. Matlab, dil bhoot khush hai ki naya janam ho gaya, like naya born ho gaya. Matlab ki bhoot khushi hai is chiz ki ki nagrita mil gaya hume, sir. Vahan toh bhoot tikkat thi, Pakistan mein hume bhoot tikkat thi. Matlab, hum ladki hai vahan padh nahi paati thi, aur kar se bhaal nikal paati, nahi nikal paati thi. Matlab, nikal na tha toh bhi hum burka pehen ke nikal thi thi vahan, musulmana ka ho karke. Aur hum India mein aate, bhoot achha mein lagta hai, hum padh likh rahe hai. Enacted in 2019, the Citizenship Amendment Act grants citizenship to Hindus, Parsis, Sikhs, Buddhists, Jains and Christians who fled to India from Muslim-majority Afghanistan, Bangladesh and Pakistan before December 31, 2014 because of religious persecution. While the law makes it easier for non-Muslim refugees from neighbouring Muslim-majority countries to get Indian citizenship, Opposition and Muslim groups say the law is anti-Muslim and if combined with the proposed National Register of Citizens, could discriminate against India's 200 million Muslims. However, the government denies the charge. A Pakistan court on Wednesday has granted bail to jail's former Prime Minister and PDI chief Imran Khan in a land corruption case. 
The former cricketer was indicted on charges that he and his wife were gifted land by a real estate developer when Khan was prime minister in exchange for illegal favors. Despite the bail, Khan in jail since August last year will not be immediately released as he is serving sentences in two other cases. Notably, both the jailed former Pakistan Prime Minister and his wife, Bushra Bibi, are accused in this case. Khan is named in dozens of cases, including charges of inciting violence against the state in the aftermath of his removal from office in 2022 in a parliamentary vote of no confidence. His wife, Bushra Bibi, is also in jail, serving time in a case related to unlawfully marrying Khan in 2018. Khan has repeatedly denied all the charges against him and claimed his ouster was plot by rivals. Activists on Friends Day raised concern over condition of Uyghur, Tibetans and political prisoners in China and called for an international intervention against the rights abuse. A report. Activists on Wednesday raised concern over human rights violations by Beijing as they highlighted condition of political prisoners, Uyghur minorities and Tibetan community in China. Accusing Beijing of genocide at the 2024 Geneva Summit for Human Rights and Democracy, Uyghur linguistic and poet Abdul Veli Ayub said Chinese government is enforcing population transfer within the ethnic minority community. He added, while many members of the community have been transferred across China as laborers, more than 90,000 Uyghur children have also been forcefully enrolled in boarding schools to disconnect them from their families. Ayub also accused Chinese authorities of forced sterilization and abortion among the Muslim minority, which he says constitutes a genocide. It is a genocide because there are population transfer, like uh, Chinese government transfer Uyghur as a forced labor to Chinese provinces. There are 18 Chinese provinces Uyghur uh, forced labor transferred to and they are they were they are working those places and uh, they uh, separated from their family, separated from their relatives, separated from their culture. Shemi Lamu, a Tibetan Canadian activist, also emphasized on the biased nature of China as she highlighted the dire situation in Tibet and said any document issued by Beijing regarding region reflects the oppressor's perspective. Such documents are filed with lies propagated by the Chinese government and Xi Jinping, she added. Rai Xia, an exiled activist from China, also slammed Beijing over its treatment of ethnic minority Uyghurs and Tibetan as she called Xinjiang as the world's largest open prison. The activists cultivately called for international intervention in order to halt China's human rights abuses against the ethnic minority communities. Any Chinese document that comes out on the Tibetan people, you must understand that there's two sides, the oppressor and the oppressed. If the oppressor is talking about the oppressed and making of documents, and no matter what, whether it's about the freedom movement, whether it's about His Holiness the Dalai Lama, whether it's about border issues with India, wherever else, you know that it's coming from the oppressor's side, so that is going to be what? Lies. Nothing. China is really doing devastating human rights reports in the world and they are treating Uyghurs and Tibetans really like animals and the world is turning its eye away from the, what's happening in China. Sri Lanka on Wednesday informed that at least 16 of their citizens fighting as mercenaries have died in Russia-Ukraine war. Sri Lanka's Deputy Defence Minister Pramita Tenakun said that the authorities opened an inquiry last week into the recruitment of its citizens in the war and have since identified 288 retired soldiers who participated in the conflict. Tenakun said the recruitment of Sri Lankans was being treated as a human trafficking enterprise and urged military officers not to fall prey to the recruitment drive. The Sri Lankan government was also in talks with the Ukrainian and Russian foreign ministers to track down Sri Lankans in the two countries and bring them back safely. Sri Lanka has repeatedly warned its citizens against travelling to Russia or Ukraine to join the fighting. In recent weeks, Russia has stepped up its long-range aerial assaults on Ukraine's energy system and other targets. Moscow has been ratcheting up the pressure on Kyiv as Russian forces have been slowly advancing in the east. 
Russia denies targeting civilians during its airstrikes and says the energy system is a legitimate target. The United States is looking to rebuild trust between Washington and Dhaka. U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for South and Central Asian Affairs, Donald Glu, said on Wednesday, following his meeting with Foreign Minister Hassan Mahmoud at his office. Addressing the media, Lu stated that over the past year, there has been a lot of tension between the two countries as the U.S. focused on promoting free, fair and non-violent elections in Bangladesh. However, he noted that Washington now looks forward to building cooperation on positive issues. Our discussion with the foreign minister today reaffirmed our shared commitment to cultivating economic growth, bolstering the workforce, improving security cooperation, addressing the climate crisis and reinforcing our values of respecting democracy and human rights, a statement from the U.S. mission in Dhaka added. Notably, relations between Washington and Dhaka had strained due to sanctions, elected-related visa restrictions and multiple calls for free and fair elections in Bangladesh by U.S. However, Bangladesh has called the actions interference in its internal affairs. A Nepali court on Wednesday acquitted cricketer Sandeep Lamichane in the sexual assault case. Overturning the verdict by the Kathmandu District Court, the Patan High Court cleared Lamichane of the charges due to a lack of evidence. Following his acquittal, the Cricket Association of Nepal also revoked his suspension, paving the way for Lamichane to travel to the West Indies and the United States to participate in the World Cup. The Nepali leg spinner was accused of rape by a minor in 2022. The case primarily focused on the age of the girl, with subsequent hearings being postponed multiple times. While the Kathmandu District Court dismissed the claim that the victim was a minor at the time of the incident, it found Lami Chane guilty of sexual assault and sentenced him to eight years in prison. Lami Chane challenged the verdict in the Patan High Court claiming to be the victim and alleging that he had been framed in the case. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.